Um, everybody can see my screen, et cetera. Um, I will open up chat and I will open up participants in here. In case there's anybody else who wants to come in. Okay, so um, so welcome everybody to um, our weekly show on how to build an ADU in your property. Um, I wanna congratulate you because running the numbers is the very first thing that any real estate investor should do before you spend a dime on anything on your project. You need to know number one, how much are you qualified to build, right? What's the loan amount you're qualified for? And then you're going to build to that budget. Number two, is this going to cash flow? What's the rental income? Not only are we gonna run through those numbers, but we're also going to optimize your designs for that rental income. Some people think that in order to maximize your rent, um, that we have to build this huge ADU in your backyard. In fact, we often, if you have space for a two bedroom, we often see that the optimal rental configuration is a one bedroom duplex uh, ADU here and a one bedroom ADU here. The other, there's some other benefits of that. If you build uh, multiple, uh, like a two bedroom or a three bedroom, you'll tend to have children running through your yard, which may be fine, but for other people, that's a problem. So, um, so we're gonna take a look at all these things before you spend a dime. It takes a lot of collaboration upfront with the GC as well as with me. Um, and only then are you gonna start spending any money on your project because you'll have the confidence to know your numbers and go forward knowing it makes sense. So first question, um, I wanna give you some greater perspective. Um, the state of California and really across the nation, they are tired of neighbors saying, Joe Bob next door, he's building something, I don't want him building, all that kind of stuff. So what they've said is they've upzoned the entire state. And what they said in 2017 is every single family home can have an ADU. What's an ADU? An accessory dwelling unit. In mortgage terminology, it's a granny flat. But it could also mean a shed, a pool house, all kinds of things. The problem, the problem with the term granny flat uh, is that in mortgage land, we're not allowed to factor future rental income, and we don't treat the square footage of the house um, as part of the gross living area on the appraisal. So there's some tricks with that. We're going to talk about it. Um, but it was so overwhelmingly popular that the legislator then said, you can have two ADUs if it's owner-occupied. And then in 2021, we had SB9, which really cleaned up a lot of the language and said, no, we, we can now every single house in California that's owner occupied if you have a primary house here you can add a second house we call that an SB9 unit and you can have two ADUs so again every single family lot in the state of California can technically have four total units on the property there were some cleanup bills six cleanup bills in 2022 um, that I will give you a lease on they can't restrict parking they can go, you can go two stories now. And also cities cannot restrict setbacks more than 15 feet. So the front of your house, these great big grassy yards are now largely open play to add space for living. Um, and right now we've got about 13 bills on the docket to expand this even more, including being allowing to condo ties your ADU project and sell off the units. Um, so for example, if you're building um, uh, an ADU or an SB9 unit for your kid, you can technically sell that to your kid after it's built. So there's lots of good, good things going on. Also, they're looking at eliminating um, the restrictions to only owner-occupied so that any single family house, and whether it's a rental or an owner-occupied uh, unit, can, can do all of this. So bottom line is you can expect to be allowed to, up, to build up to four units on a single family property. And you may not be interested in building all of that, but you definitely want to master plan your property. Don't just plop an ADU right smack in the middle of the backyard, put it in a back corner in case you change your mind five, 10 years from now and want to build additional units. Um, what's the difference between an SB9 unit and an ADU? We talked a little bit about that, but the minimum size of an SB9 unit is 800 square feet, whereas the maximum size is of an ADU is 1,200 square feet, and most ADUs end up being no bigger than 800 square feet. 
Um, an SB9 unit is literally the same thing as a regular house. Um, but what that means, the difference between an ADU is that you've got to have fire sprinklers and so on. So if you do end up splitting the lot, the SB9 unit is rezoned as just a regular house. So lots of interesting stuff going on there. And in practice, these can be very different looking, or actually they can look exactly the same as an ADU. Um, so if you look at this example, this guy, gentleman has split the lot here. He's got a SB9 unit, SB9 unit, ADU, ADU. This person has carved up the house, SB9 unit, SB9, ADU, ADU. And this person down here has a big old new primary house with an attached junior ADU and then two, uh, two units here. So there's all kinds of crazy configurations um, that you can now re rebuild your property into. What do ADUs cost? Well, we're, as the largest ADU lender in the state, we see these bids all the time. Um, and the way that, uh, that construction bids are generated is it's the cost of materials, cost of labor, and a 15% markup. Um, an attached ADU, a garage conversion, in other words, typically costs about $100,000. It really depends on the build. Why is that more expensive than a detached? Well, usually the attached garage, as the guys, the GCs tell me, the foundations are built to residential code. That's a six inch pour with rebar reinforcement, whereas the garages are typically a four inch pour with no rebar. So you can see a lot of cracks in the foundation. Also on the attached garages, they tend the roofing and the trussing tends to be of the same quality as the primary house, whereas that's generally not the case with the detached garage. In fact, I was just at Home Depot and I noticed there's a $14,000 garage car kit, build do-it-yourself kit. That's how cheaply uh, detached garages tend to be built. Not always, but I generally see these ripped down, maybe one wall remains standing and they rebuild it. That's okay. So at today's high interest rates, um, 100,000 is about $500 per month and rates are already starting to come down. Fannie Mae's official projection is that we'll be at 4.3% in nine to 12 months. So the timing on your ADU is absolutely perfect because you're really not gonna spend most of the money until closer to the time of construction. You're doing prep work now. Even at today's high rates though, look at the, the rents are even higher. So even at today's high rates, I'm really seeing these projects cash flow. Now, how do you know what your rent's gonna be? Well, let me start by saying, do not go to Rent-A-Meter, don't look at apartments.com. An ADU is a higher quality product than a rental unit. If you had a choice, would you rather be in a box with no yard and you can hear your neighbors yelling? Or would you rather be in a brand new custom built house that feels like a single family home? So I typically see uh, rents uh, about $300 to $400 higher on ADUs than I do uh, rental units. And you can go see that for yourself by filtering out uh, apartments. Also, we're gonna optimize the design for rent. Let's go back and remember, if a two bedroom rents for 3,800 and, and a one bedroom rents for 2,200, if you have space for a two bedroom, then again, it might make sense to build two one bedroom units. And so instead of getting just 3,800, you're getting two times 2,200, 4,400. That's a lot more income simply by adding a wall between the two units pretty much. So good value for your money. So going forward, how do you finance this? Well, typically we see a two part, um, two parts to this. The first part is the construction loan, right? We wanna be able to finance 100% of the build. There should be no down payments, no out-of-pocket costs, it's all financed. Most people these days are using a HELOC, a home equity line of credit to do that. We'll talk about that. When you're done with construction, you don't need the line of credit and the rates are back down. The second phase is we're gonna give you a complimentary rate and term refinance to fix that interest rate at a low rate and to start paying down the principal. We have a lifetime guarantee on our loans. Once you do a loan on your, on our, your property, um, any future refinances are free. So we waive our lender fees. 
And yes, we can cash out up to 95% of uh, value once the ADU is completed to pay off a HELOC if you choose to do that. Um, there's a lot of good options. So most people are not doing a cash out refinance. You've got a nice low interest rate on your first mortgage. We do home equity lines of credit based on current value. We can go up to 95% of current value, but we also have a really cool construction HELOC. The construction HELOC is based on up to 125% of future value, and we are able to factor in rental future rental income. So if somebody's debt to income ratio doesn't qualify them for a HELOC, oftentimes by including the future rent rentability of the, of the ADU, we can get you qualified. So, and renovation and construction lending are what we specialize in. You have to remember, most banks and credit unions do not do this. Um, they're very complicated loans. And so if you go up to them and say, well, do you, you know, could I get qualified for this? They're going to say, no, I'm sorry, you're not qualified. You don't have enough equity. They're not going to say, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have that loan product, right? So this is what we really specialize in. What's um, what the way that renovation and construction lending works is that we literally send the appraiser out with the pretty architectural designs and the floor plan. And he looks at it and says, oh, I see what you're going to do with that garage. When you build the ADU, instead of your house being a current value, it will be more. In this example, let's say that house was 700,000 and they could do a HELOC up to 80% or a cash out. That doesn't give you quite the cash available. But even if I get a low ball appraisal, just $100,000 in extra value, that gives me plenty of cash available to build the kind of um, property that I want to. Um, and you should know that an average appraiser often does give a $0 value to ADUs. We're the only bank out there that uses trained ADU appraisers out there. Let me give you an example. A couple of investors of mine bought a house in Burbank for 1.3 million. They added an ADU for 200,000. The appraiser, an average appraiser came out and gave it a value of 1.4 million. So they were losing money on the deal. My appraiser looked at the rental income and the marketability of it, and he gave it a value of 1.9 million. So really cool stuff. Loan, we also have loan options for rental properties, um, including home equity loans. Nobody has HELOCs for rental properties. We also have a, an interest-only construction bridge loan. Um, I've used that product myself. Um, and for seniors 55 and older, we actually have the FHA home equity conversion mortgage. Most seniors choose to simply take the cash out of, of their house to build the ADU, have no mortgage payment during construction, and then sometimes we'll refinance at the end back to a forward mortgage so that the renter is paying off the loan and providing cash flow to the client. All of this is a collaborative process, and this is um, a great timeline. See, it looks complicated, but during this whole process, rates are coming down over time. So if you start, the, you're right here at loan pre-approval, and if you're going to do a HELOC, this is where we get you signed up for a HELOC, because designs are going to take about two to three months. Designs typically take about $10,000. That's about $80 a month at today's high rates. But maybe next month or the month after, it's, it goes down to $70 a month. Now you're going to submit permits. That's maybe $5,000. So that's going to be an extra. Now it's $70 a month for the first $10,000, $35 for the second $10,000, so $105. And that monthly payment will continue to go down while you're waiting the six, to six months on the permits. Permits are definitely taking a much longer time. When you get the permits back and start work on construction, that's when you're really going to start to tap into your, your funds. And if you're going to do a cash out refinance, this is going to be the time where we're going to do it. We'll get you pre-approved here, but um, we're going to pull out uh, uh, the loan actually here. So, And then uh, you go through four to six months of construction. Typically, bigger projects go up to eight months. When you're done and rented, this is when we're going to give you that complimentary refinance because rates should be nice and low by then and you don't need the line of credit anymore. While you're at it, you're doing a big loan, you got guys stomping through your yard, master plan your property, do take care of any deferred maintenance. 
Um, the last thing you want to do at age 80 is uh, redo your roof. So get take care of that stuff now. My recommendation is that the utilities are being a real pain on metering. So if you don't have to, or if you aren't required to add separate meters, don't. Add solar and charge your renter for the utilities. I have one retiree who did that, and then he went out and bought an electric vehicle, and he loves to joke about how they're not only paying for his utilities, but they're also paying for his gas. ADU loans for families. Unfortunately, there's no standalone ADU loan available. It's always a first or second mortgage. Um, but oftentimes what we do is we go in together as tenants in common. So let's say mom and dad own a primary home and junior wants to build an ADU for his family. So mom, we would, and the siblings are saying, wait a minute, junior just can't take over the house. So what happens is, is we title it as tenants in common and we can do the HELOC. So um, that adds junior to title, but he will only own the ADU and mom and dad will continue to own the house and all of the land. So when mom and dad pass away, they can bequeath their in equal share to the siblings, but junior will still retain his ADU and own that. Um, and then junior's paying the HELOC off himself, the home equity line of credit off, um, as well as his portion of uh, property taxes and insurance, which brings up property taxes. Property taxes are not reassessed on the primary home and the land. They stay exactly the same, but the ADU is assessed at current market rates and then blended in in the tax statement. So you will see what mom and dad will continue to owe, that doesn't change, and what junior will pay. The tax assessors will tell you that you should estimate 1% times the construction budget. I don't usually see that high. I usually see about 100 bucks a month, maybe 150 for a larger project. Homeowners insurance too, really doesn't go back up. You insure the ADU as part of the house. It's usually an extra $20 a month to factor in. My recommendation um, on these houses is go big. Um, I swear I, I blinked and my three-year-old son became a 20-year-old son and I miss that boy. And I'm gonna blink again and he's gonna be engaged much to my chagrin. And then I'm gonna blink again and he's much to my delight, they're gonna be pregnant and having babies. And I want them close. So I would recommend build bigger than you think, knowing that um, you can always rent the rooms, but ultimately that can become his family home or you can move into the ADU and he moves into the house. So there's lots of good optionality here. The California ADU grant is on pause. I do not expect it to come back. You didn't miss it. It's a nightmare. We'll talk about it later. Um, tips and tricks, run the numbers first. You can tell this is very collaborative. Um, if you're getting low ball bids, it's because you're not using an ADU specifically uh, professional. Um, I see these bids all day long. They're very standard. If somebody is giving you a low ball design, they are going to come back to you and say, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't included in the contract, or I didn't know we had to do that. Either way, you're going to have to cough up 25 to 50 grand, and that's a huge issue. Um, and similarly, do not run out of cash. The black hole of lending is a half-built ADU. Banks do not want to touch it. There's been no construction oversight. And then at that part, you're talking to loan sharks. So that's a huge issue. Um, so, um, so just be careful on a couple of those things. I'd be happy to review uh, construction bids and see what the dealio is. Um, this is an example. I just want to show this. This is an example of what I mean by uh, the attached garages. See how the how roof house here is the same and the, um, the, the foundation's basically the same. This is a perfect garage conversion. An ADU professional, um, a non-professional would simply slap in a door here. An ADU professional would probably put a door here or even here so that there's not this awkwardness as people are walking out the door in the morning or hanging out. They have their privacy over here and you have your privacy here. So lots of neat ways to design things. Um, these are the kinds of numbers, they won't make sense now, but this is where we go over payments and spreadsheets right up front at no charge before you spend a dime of money. These are the numbers you need to know in order to make quality decisions about your ADU project. 
So with that in mind, um, I'm going to, um, the best way to get hold of me is my Calendly. My calendar is online. Um, please do not call me. I'm hard to reach. Um, I can be texted and emailed, but Calendly is the best way to schedule a call. And when you're ready to apply, I want you to apply at uh, Meredith.team and we'll work up estimates for you. ADULoans.net is a fantastic resource as we have videos on all of these things and we can start to answer questions. With that, I'm gonna type my calendar uh, in here and we can start to open questions in the chat. Um, also, I want to um, I want to do a couple of things. I'm going to add some resources in the chat that you should click and download. First of all is the uh, SB9 fact sheet from the California Department of Housing and Community Development. This is the state law, period. Uh, no matter what the permit offices are saying, because they do often say different things, this is what state law is. So you can print this out, bring it into the office and say, well, it kind of says SB9 says I can do it this. So that is something else to think about. Um, the second thing is um, a write-up from a company called Holland and Knight um, about the 2023 laws that has to do with the parking, the setbacks, and the um, uh, and the two stories. So if the permit offices are saying that you can't do something, bring these resources with you because they say you can. And just ask them. Always be sweet, but ask them. So with that, I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna open it up to questions. Would anybody like to go over uh, their property? Okay, Deb, um, can you guys post that? I will send you a copy of the video. Can you post the address in the chat and then unmute yourself? I don't know how to do Okay, what's, what's the property address? Uh, um... 1031 Country Club Drive. 1031 Country Club Drive. Uh, in what city? Petaluma. Uh, what is it? Petaluma? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, let me share my screen here. Hey, Imani, good to see you. Okay, talk to me about this Hello. project. <laughs> Hi, okay, so I have an upstairs apartment that needs a separate entrance and a kitchen. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of already established. You can see it on the second floor there. Mm -hmm. um, the apartment's already established. I just need to um, put in a kitchen and a separate entrance. So, okay. so the first thing is like, I don't know how much that's gonna cost to do. So I don't know how much to ask for a, a loan for. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe I can just start there with that question because that's yeah, like that's a darn good question. And this is where th that collaboration between the GC and the lender, um, I can definitely recommend some GCs. Um, just so you guys know, I um, I don't get referrals and uh, get referral fees, and I don't I don't give referral fees. We're the bank, we're Switzerland, and I'm on the hook ultimately for that loan. So I want, it's my job to make sure that you're having high quality people that you're working with. Um, so we, I would get the, the, an estimate from the GC, and then let's take a look. As a general rule of thumb, my construction and renovation loans require me, if Fannie Mae requires me to add a 10% contingency buffer. So even if you're not using a construction renovation loan, that's good practice to add a 10% contingency buffer in case of cost overruns. Um, do you mind if we look up the, uh, the potential uh, rental income here? Yeah, um, yes. That means, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay, so just like I said, I'm on Zillow. Um, and of course my system is going to be really slow right now. I don't um, think my JC knows either. I mean, I talked to one yesterday and he's, you know, he's saying like, well, you could do a gajillion different things. So it just depends. And so he didn't really have a, a, a clear vision of like how much it would cost either. So I, I actually just don't, I'm, I'm kind of clueless. Yeah, no, that's, and that's fine. I think, um, you know, talking with him over what the best approach would be. And that's part of the question. What's the best approach here? Yeah. So um, so notice I've um, filtered out apartments here, but I am including townhomes. 
and let's use exact match. So there's no studios, let's see, we can scoot out here. No studios up here, but let's see if we've got any one bedroom ADUs. Oh, look at that. 2,500. It's a studio space. It's not a one bedroom. I mean, there's nothing. It's just like a big open space. Okay. Yeah. With no so, so it is. I, a, I'd say 2,200. I would run yeah. it for 2,200 at worst. You run it, it ends up going for 2,100 or 2,000, but that's what I would run it for, for sure. For sure. Okay. That I know. That I already know. So that's, that's clear. Okay. <laughs> Got it's it. a matter of, um, oh, so I also wanted to ask what the percentage rate is right now. Yeah, so um, on the HELOCs, the rates are 6 to 9% interest only. Um, but remember, they're interest only. So rate is only one factor. To give you a sense, if you spend $10,000 at 6% on a 30 year, that's about 50 bucks a month. And um, when rates go down, it'll be about 41 bucks a month. So. Absolutely. Uh, uh, tell me again, a, a HELOC, can you tell me again what that is? I'm a little confused. Home equity line of credit. And mm -hmm. it's a second mortgage. So you're not refinancing your first mortgage. Okay. And it's literally like a credit card on your house. You, if you, you can have a huge credit card with a credit line of 20,000, right. but if right. you only spend a hundred dollars, you only pay on a hundred dollars. Okay. Um, all right, so that, that makes sense. And so for me to be qualified, you would have to see what my equity is in the house and how much I make and all of that, correct? Or do yes. you? Yeah, yes, that's we're all. predominantly looking at what we call the debt to income ratio. In other words, if you take on this debt, will you have the ability to repay it? Yeah. Pretty common sense. So um, without the, with potentially with or without that rental income. So that's what we're looking at. Okay. Uh, yeah. The so, um, so can I go back to the interest? It, what's interest only means I'm not paying any of the principal, correct? That's right. During the during construction, you're not paying any principal. Oh, so only it, during construction. Yeah. And then after then the second phase is we're going to do that complimentary refinance. Okay. Once you're done with construction, you don't need the line of credit anymore because you're not building anymore. And now you're getting rental income. So we're going to refinance that into a fixed rate uh, second mortgage, again, not refinancing the first. So now you're paying principal and interest. And, and wait on that, or you can't say because that's in the future, correct? We expect if Fannie Mae is correct, and it's about 4.3% on a primary mortgage, I think you can probably expect five or 5.5%. Um, and that's about $450 for every 100,000 you spend. Okay. Okay. okay, those are, yeah, that's, that's what I needed to know for sure. Cool. So I feel uh, like I only need like 50 to, to make it happen for my house because it's already established. I'm not starting from ground zero. So that's I mean, kind of my gut feeling too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, think so. Are you local? And so are you in, where are you? Sonoma? or I'm in San Diego. We're the largest oh. ADU lender in the state. Yeah. So, so you would give me a lender here in, in California, like a, in absolutely. my county? Absolutely. I do a ton up there. Ton. In the county of Sonoma County? I sure do. Okay, perfect. Okay. Sure do. Thank you. Cool. Um, the $40,000 grant um, is, uh, was the problem with the grant is that they were requiring everybody to put the entire loan into an escrow account up front, which means you're paying on that loan every month during designs, during permits, that wipes out the benefit of any grant. The grant is also taxable to 40,000. So everybody just who got it last year and we financed 90% of them last year, they just got bills for $12,000 in taxes on those. So um, it is on hold right now. I don't think it's gonna come back, but I don't think you missed anything. The HELOC solves the problem by paying little bit by little bit. Um, above the garage, I think is a great idea, Jana. It, um, ADUs above the garage conserve your yard space and give more space to grow. It also enhances privacy too. So I think that's a great choice. Um, um, I live in Monterey County. Yes. Uh, so you must finance up here also, I would imagine, For sure. if you do Sonoma. Yeah, and but there must be some extra cost, of course, 
for instance, foundation and, and structure you know, stucco or, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. I, the, at, and I just put a new roof on la, uh, two years ago. So mm -hmm. I probably would have to kind of redo some of that. Yeah. For sure. And I typically see um, when I hear second story, I usually in my head, it's 40,000, about 40, 50,000. That's about an extra 200 bucks a month worth every penny. Your renter's going to pay for it. You're conserving space. So I know you guys are like, oh my gosh, it's 10,000. It's a hundred thousand. Nah, $10,000 is 50 bucks a month. A hundred thousand dollars is about 500 bucks a month at today's rates. And it will drop to about $41 a month and $416 a month. So I, I missed in the beginning, you said it, construction costs should be how much? Um, construction costs, um, I typically see for a detached ADU, um, it depends on the area. Up north, well, it is I mean, much more This attached, attached above the garage. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to guess it's going to be about 300000 in Monterey. Oh, yeah, okay. um, that's going to, so that cost is about $1,500, which uh, per month, what's mm -hmm. your rent, do you know what your rent's going to be? Oh, probably. Well, it ha it's going to have an ocean view. Uh, and, 4, yeah, is what yeah, I'm thinking. Which is the primary reason I'm doing it, because I think I would live up there and then rent my primary house out. Brilliant. But uh, it could be 2000 for the ADU where I am. Oh, it's going to be much more than that. With an ocean view in Monterey, yeah. I think you're yeah. thinking 4000 Well, it's uh, 400 square feet is what it would be. Let's go look. Let's go look. What's the address? Uh, 3208 Tallman, T-A-L-L-M-O-N Street in Marina. Okay. All right, this is my favorite part. And behind me is 600 acres of natural preserve. So oh. that's the back view and the front view is the ocean. Okay. Let's see what it's going to be. Yeah, 2000 yeah. seems way too low. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Hold on. Ah, so this one's 5500. Oh, but for how, for an ADU? Uh-huh. For a one bedroom 700 square foot ADU. Um they're a little oh, big. Yeah, but 55 yeah, a little big. But yeah, yeah you're right. But I think the, this is what I mean by I think people are way undervaluing their ADUs. If mm. you've got, I, my gut feeling in that area would be 4000 for an ADU like that with such a view. That's, that's a oh. huge deal. Yeah, yeah it, is, th it, it is a huge deal. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this guy's 5,500. Looks like he's got a view of the ocean, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, you get a sense of that. Um, anyway. Okay, um, I'm going to go to Charlie, if that's okay, guys in Northridge. Charlie, you. I, yeah, you bet. Charlie, I don't have um, special, well, I, I do have some special programs for VA, um, but I think that the HELOCs are still might be your best bet. Um, so let's take a look. What are you looking to do on this, Charlie? Can you take yourself off uh, a mute and talk about it? Okay. Okay. Well, Charlie, this looks like a huge opportunity here. What I like about Charlie's house is that he's got a couple different options. He could build an ADU back here or extend the house. He could also convert this. This is what I mean by these gorgeous garage conversions. These are fantastic ADUs, these standard California two, two car garages. Um, and you can put a, you know, put some French doors on those and have a beautiful little place right without spending a lot of money. The garage conversions are by far your cheapest return on investment. Um, and in Northridge, let's see what the rents are for a one bedroom. Hold on. One bedrooms are going for twenty one hundred nineteen fifty, so around about two thousand. 
So, and a fifty thousand dollar garage conversion is going to be, you know, about two hundred and twenty thousand, uh, two thousand, uh, sorry, two hundred twenty five bucks a month. Uh, Don, did you have a question here? You want to take yourself off mute? Sure, I have a question um, very similar to uh, everyone else. I would like to give you my property. It's yeah. already split. It's okay. a 3836 Dayton Street, 95838. Okay, cool. What are you going to do there? Well, what I'd like to do is go up on the current house and kind of maybe duplex it. And then there's a detachable garage in the back. Oh, yeah. And go up that. Yeah. And then put something else on the land that's split. Where is it split? So you've already, you've done an SB9 split? No, I haven't done an SB9 split. When I bought the house, it's a uh, one house, two lot. I pay uh, taxes on two lots. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, you have space. You have space for so much. Where is the lot split exactly? Because I'm not seeing it. Now, again. see that? I I have it somewhere, but I don't exactly know. I think it's split between the house and the other side because it's all clear. And from what I understand, there used to be a dwelling over there. That now there's certainly a Okay. Yeah. So I would definitely find out what is, um, what is over there. And the reason why is because if you're, if you're building on straight land, um, okay. and Lu Lucy, you're next, if you're building on straight land, that is called a construction to permanent loan. And um, they're a little more of a pain in the tush, but it's very doable. Um, there's no down payment. You're using the land as equity and we can build a house and an ADU on that. Um, but if the this garage is here, what I'd rather do is just expand onto the garage. It's a slightly easier, less expensive loan um, called a renovation loan. It's like one step below um, construction loan. And we okay. could expand out to wherever we want. But I see massive, I mean, there's space here, there's yes. space here. I mean, you could you could easily build up to eight units on this property if you chose to. And oh. still, and still potentially maintain the character. You know, it doesn't, design is everything. You don't, it doesn't have to look like an apartment building. It can look like a cute little village. Okay, because um, I saw the 55 and older loan. Uh-huh. Okay. And yeah. then I try to put my parents out here. Oh, brilliant. It can only be the parents on the title for that 55 and older loan. So okay. if, are you the one on the title or are they? I am, but I'm 55. Oh, perfect. Okay, we'll talk. We'll okay. talk. Okay. Um, okay, Lucy, 15 foot setback from the front. Yes, that is the new law. So walk back down to the um, uh, walk back down to the the office, and with that Holland and Knight write up about the new uh, setback laws. Um, so this is actually kind of an example, like all these big, huge, grassy front yards. Um, you, they can only uh, make the setback up to 15 feet. Um, a good way to see what you know, where is the setback? Um, oftentimes, it's about. It's not necessarily at the the street or the sidewalk. Often, it's about two feet in, and you'll know because if you look, go down your driveway and you look to the left and you look to the right, you'll see where your neighbor's fences kind of end. That's generally the setback line. So it gives you a sense. And then so you take a thing, 15 feet, at that point you can start building in the forward. Did you have any other questions, Lucy? Yeah, okay. So yeah, because I just went to the city. Um, I live in Lemon Grove, California, and they, mm -hmm. they did say it's 25 feet. So then they're not updated, I guess. Is that what this yeah, is? Yeah, a is this lot. That's a very common thing. Or um, they know what's going on. So I had the same issue in a property I'm developing. I walked up to the office and I said, hey, guys, I want to build three additional units. And they said, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. And then I said, brought up my SB9 paper, which I put in the chat. And they said, oh, SB9. OK, yeah, you can do that. And they said, but you're going to have to have six covered parking spaces. And I pulled out the Holland and Knight thing and the setback thing. And, and every time, oh, oh, in other words, 
oh yeah, you know the inside scoop, right? So yeah, go back to them, show them the Holland and Knight thing about the new setback laws and, you know, sweet as pie. Um, say, hey, I was just reading this, right? Because you don't want to argue with them. That's never a good choice with permit people. Um, okay. Yeah. And um, I guess my other question is, the issue that I have is like, I really want to build the ADU, but I don't have the money up front for to get the plans in and get the the, the permits in. Um, is that something that you all are available? Yeah, that's what that the question? home equity okay. line of credit so, is wonderful for. Mm -hmm. The the, oh, gosh, the home equity a line bit up front and then project. Yeah. yeah. So typically I see the cost of designs, let's say okay. a nice round number of ten thousand. That's going to be when you're paying it on your home equity line of credit, they literally send you a checking, a checkbook and like a little debit card. So you pay your, your um, you pay your architect and that's in next month, you're going to get a statement. Uh, it would probably be on, um, you know, about 80 bucks a month. It's not much at all. So um, Jerry, yes. Um, let's go to Jerry and then we'll go back to Christina. Um, Jerry, um, reverse mortgage on your home. That's great. Um, I would talk to, I think this is, uh, I would talk to, as a reverse mortgage, you often have a line of credit built into the reverse mortgage, and that's a great tool to build your ADU. That two-car garage looks perfect to me. Um, that look, that's a classic, um, maybe $50,000 project at best. Um, although get a contractor out there for sure, only 80,000. I think you'd be able to do that, Jerry. I'd get a contractor out there and see if you could do that. I, and tell the, tell the contractor, I can't go above 50,000. What could I do? You know, or tell him that, like what, um, I think that's a fair, um, I think that's a, a fair, um, thing to say is just, Hey guys, I got 50,000. What can I do? So, um, so try that, and then your rental income, you're looking at about nineteen, one thousand nine hundred and fifty. I think, um, I, I think that you can. I think you'll be able to do this, Jerry. And if you have problems with your mortgage, I want to have a specialist look at it um, because those are very special um, programs that you can really hurt yourself on. And I've got some great people um, I can refer you to. So, how much do you think uh, was construction? I was going to say on a garage like yours, like 50,000, I don't think it's going to be that much. Um, and to be honest, oh. Jerry, yeah, if you're a handy person. Uh, no, I'm not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Not at all. <laughs> you're like, no. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. I think you could get as low as 50,000, but certainly for 80 grand and just tell the contractor, look, this is my max budget. What can we do? Right. A um, lot of good things. And there are ways to save money on ADUs. Um, there's, there's four key things to save money on ADUs. One is take a look at flooring. If you keep a, a, an uber chic cement floor with um, epoxy, that is gonna, that's going to save you 20000 on flooring right there um, and still have it be very modern and chic. Second thing is, um, if you're building, only have one wet wall. In other words, one wall where all the plumbing is. So you want to line up your bathroom and your kitchen and laundry all along one wall, right by where the pipes are. So you don't have pipes everywhere. Um, third, um, you want to have a very simple roof, preferably a square or a rectangle, because then you can use commercially built roof trusses. They're built in a factory and contractors just buy them and slap them on the roof. If you're, if you have unique lines on your roofing, that the trusses have to be handmade and that is very expensive. So there's a number of things you can do um, to save you money and, and keep the costs down. Why would I change roofs? It's in good shape. Yeah, don't. You're in great shape. So you would, I, all you're doing is filling in the inside and putting on a door. That's it, pretty much. Well, also, well, I had drywall the whole garage before. I was using it as an office and my man cave, you might say. Nice, uh, nice. But that would have to be ripped out and put a new one in. This is not permitted. No, no, I don't think so. I, I, the cities want, the cities do not want to, 
punish people for ripping stuff, you know, to rip stuff out. So I would, I would just say, hey, what can I do? You know, and bring it up to code. They want you to bring it up to code. They want you to be able to build housing. Okay. Yeah. And you'll uh, help me with do that part. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. You bet. Christina, you had a question. Um, well, I'm I'm sir, I'm Christina for right now. Okay. <laughs> um, we <clears throat> we have a property in in Belmont, California. Okay. Uh, and the size of the property eight five six Miramar Terrace, and the size of the property is uh, I think 0.8 acres, and it's okay. essentially the size of three lots, but it's not divided. Okay. <clears throat> what city is it in? Belmont. Belmont. It's in the chat if you want to copy and paste. Oh, it. thank you. Right. Right. Excuse, excuse That's it. I'm sorry. I have to leave early. I apologize. No worries. Thank you. Okay. Miramar Towers. Okay. Terrace. Yeah. Terrace. Sorry. Okay. And it's that one there on the, yeah, like the red. Okay. Thing. Oh, wow. Fancy. Uh, no, that's not it. Not it. No, 856, not 864. 856 Miramar Terrace. Oh. Huh. I don't know why. Um, let's yeah. go back and just see if we can um, find it here. I don't know why Zello is having trouble with that's this. That's next to us. Okay. Um, so that's not ours. Gorgeous homes. That just sold for near... 3.6 million. Nice. It looks like it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay so, so that's mm -hmm. uh, that's the property. Okay. And um, like I said, it goes back and runs along three houses. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially the size of three lots. Wow. Um, and what we're trying to think about is, you know, like, how do you get access to um you know like do people just walk in because there isn't a road for that uh -huh. um, and uh you know we could put one or two adus i guess and mm -hmm. we're just looking to figure out how to make that work so with adus you don't have to create parking necessarily you can do driveway parking or street parking if you're within a half mile of busing which you are i see the little bus signs mm -hmm. right here so okay. Um, so that, so they could just park on the street and be done. Um, and walk in. yeah. And walk in alternatively, I think it would probably make sense to figure out some sort of, you know, driveway parking or something, um, just so they're not walking by your windows all the time or something like that. And again, this is where a great designer will make a huge difference with you to walk your property. So I have a pretty good skill set and I've, uh, mm -hmm. I've mapped the property. Um, I've done the um, um, the lines for the slope. It's that long one. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so all that's open property, and then it looks out either towards the bay, yep. or it looks downtown because it's high up. It's about two thousand. It's about two hundred and fifty feet high mm -hmm. um, from level. And so I'd like to start to do something with that. Yeah. Um, and I also put in uh, the electrical for 400 amps um, nice. on the main house and it has solar and we're net zero. Um, nice. So, so if, we, go ahead. We were thinking about putting an ADU, but watching our presentation, now I realize that there's more that we could do with it because yes. uh, it's a big property. It, there is a gray though, like about half of it or you know maybe two thirds of it starts kind of sloping down. Uh -huh. um, it's nice though. So one question is, um, if we were to put an SB9, could we possibly, if we uh, created the access, could we possibly split that into two properties? Yes, you can. Now you're thinking, okay. I love this. So here's what I would do if I was you. I would create a driveway here and build the largest ADU you possibly can. If we have equity, you can do whatever you want and do it all at once. But if we're using a construction loan, we start with adding the biggest building back here. And then you're going to split the lot 
this becomes a custom home and as you know an old SB9 unit now becomes a custom home you have a, an easement for the driveway so you've shared access to the driveway now you can add an ADU back here and an ADU also on your existing home property as well um, if you chose and actually you can technically add more but I don't think you want to given the this the be the flavor of the neighborhood but you do not mm -hmm. have to split that lot unless you intend to sell it off lots what is really only the only purpose for that hassle um, is to um, is to either sell off you want to sell it off and get the cash out basically or if you want to build additional units so let's say you were inclined to build eight units on that property and that's a darn big lot you could do it but and that's when you would split the lot. I don't think you want to do it. I think that four four units would be lovely on that lot. The other thing that it has is on the old maps, it has a right of way for sewer to go mm -hmm. downhill, but uh, it's not it's never been implemented. Yeah, um, and that's where you definitely want to go talk to um, the local permit offices and say and, and the question I would say is, what would you do if you were me? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to do this. Um, let's get you pre-qualified so we know what your max budget is um, and okay. start to have some numbers. But I mean, look at this one bedrooms in your area are $3,000 just mm -hmm. a one bedroom. Even if you put three one bedrooms back there. I mean, what mm -hmm. a wonderful opportunity. So that's fantastic rental income. If, if there's not someone else in line, I do have a question about a second property. That yeah, I, also I live at. saw that. Um, okay. You got some pretty sweet properties here. Um, okay. So that one Oops. is 292 Elm Street, Elm Road in, Bel in Bolinas. Okay. There we go. And Isabel, if you have a moment afterward, I'd love to catch up with you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, pretty, pretty yard. Okay. So what are you thinking about doing here? Well, this property 30 years ago was joined together and uh -huh. uh, they came back about two years ago and said, well, there was something wrong with the paperwork. So now you have two separate lots. Oh. Um, and um, there's uh, this, the problem with Bellinas is, is they have a restriction on water and they, um, uh, water meters typically run $300,000 if you can find one. Yeah, and that's I don't, been an and issue. I, yeah. And, I, and I, that may still be an issue here, and you may not be able to do anything um, because I don't have a water meter for the second lot, and I don't know if I could, you know, join the properties, use the same water meter. There's water restrictions everywhere on the coast. So... And I get that, I really do, but that seems like a violation of housing laws. So I, I would take a look. Um, so it's interesting, I was just on the HCD website. HCD is the California Department of Housing um, and Community Development. Um, look at that, new ex housing accessibility accountability unit portal. This is where they are asking uh, homeowners to rat out local communities. Um, because they're starting to enforce what's going on. So I would, and I wouldn't say rat out, but like our, so for example, you know, Jana, your description, if they stick to the 25, you know, feet line, even though the new state law says that, that's something where you can go to this and say, and get authority and support from HCD to say, hey, local guys, this is just not the dealio. You know, and and that's mm -hmm. something where it's so excessive that I would uh, I would ask them, you know, what's the deal with this? This seems excessive. What can I do? What are my rights? That mm -hmm. I would ask them that for sure. Okay. Okay. They actually told me twenty foot setback. Okay. And um, I'm I'm well within that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Funny how they're all different. You know. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. It, yeah, they're all different. Um, and so you, I think the best approach with um, permit offices is make them the hero, right? They they get beat up all day long, make them the